to uh, this morning's uh, committee hearing. It would appear, unless Ms. Perry uh, comes today, that uh, I'm the only one you will have. So, Mr. City Attorney, the actions that we take will be deemed communiques from the chair. Correct. Uh, I, I do not anticipate this to be a, a long uh, meeting, though I know we had one item that we thought we would have a discussion about, but apparently there was some hiccup or what have you uh, where it related to an appointment of, of uh, an individual. So uh, that's not on the, the agenda. So with that, Madam uh, CLA, let's uh, go with item one, please. CRA and CLA 2 report and resolution relative to a DDA with NoHo Senior Arts Colony and various actions regarding a proposed 126-unit mixed-income senior housing development and performance theater located at 10747 West Magnolia Boulevard in the North Hollywood Redevelopment Project area. Okay, then on that item, we will adopt the CRA report. That uh, brings us to uh, item two. Item two, CRA and CLA reports relative to executing a conditional grant agreement to provide Assembly Bill 1290 funds in the amount of approximately $39,000 to the Central City Neighborhood Partners for the continued preparation of a transportation plan for the Westlake Recovery Redevelopment Project area. Okay, on that item, uh, we'll adopt the CLA report. Uh, that brings us to item three. CRA and CAO reports relative to a budget increase of $70,000 and extended time of performance for Burke, Williams, and Sorensen for labor and employment law services and retaining the firm of Liebert, Cassidy, and Whitmore. Okay. On that item, we'll adopt the CAO report, and it's my understanding there's some technical amendments, and then we'll uh, receive and file the CRA report dated uh, December 17th, 2009. That brings us to item four. Community Development Department report and CAO to report relative to the status of the Wattstar Theater and Educational Center project and a request to fund pre-development costs and related actions. Okay. Uh, you really didn't have to use up all that gas to come down here. Anyway, on even though it's good to see you again and my old friend Mr. Green back there. Uh, so on item four, we'll adopt the, uh, the CAO report. That is correct. Okay. That brings us to item five. You're done. That brings us to item five. <laughs> <laughs> item five, CDD report and motion Han LeBonge and CAO to report relative to the status of the city's application to reestablish and the provision of enterprise zone incentives to businesses located in the Harbor State Enterprise Zone and expand the greater Los Angeles Enterprise Zone. Okay. On item five, we'll adopt uh, the CAO report. Item six. Department of Aging report and CAO to report relative to executing contracts with successful bidders of the 2010-11 Community Development Block Grant Alternative Housing for the Elderly and Legal Services Programs. Okay, I think we'll continue item six. Uh, item seven. Motion Parks Perry relative to the transfer of $1.18 million in Council District 8 Assembly Bill 1290 funds from the CRA to the Bureau of Street Services for various public improvements. Okay, we'll adopt... Uh, that motion that uh, brings us to item eight. CRA report and CAO report relative to various actions concerning the proposed Los Angeles Clean Technology Business Incubator to be located in the Central Industrial Redevelopment Project Area and the Clean Tech Corridor. Okay, then uh, we'll adopt the CAO report on that item as well. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, it should be noted that these items will be deemed uh, communiques from the chair. Correct, sir. That brings us to uh, public comment. I've got uh, Julia, uh, I think it's McGuire, Nick uh, da Daman, and Steve Diaz. If any of you would please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Julia McGuire, and I'm with both Inquilinos Unidos and the Right to Housing Collective. And I'm here in support of Alarcon's original proposal for a moratorium on rent increases this year, 
there should not be an exemption for any landlords, especially mom and pops, which creates a situation of unequal protection. Uh, some tenants will benefit and others will not, solely due to the characteristics of their landlord, and many of these characteristics are unknown to tenants. There are already procedures in place to help mom and pops, other landlords um, facing financial hardships at this time, uh, such as just and reasonable rent applications and the primary renovation ordinance. Um, so instead, we recommend that um, you create a hardship, uh, hardship clause for instead of the actual um, hardship exemption application process to be incorporated into the moratorium rather than uh, across the board exemption for mom and pops under five units. And thank you very much for hearing us. Have a nice day. Thank you uh, very much as well. Um, you, the time that you guys should be spending, uh, the, the, the motion is going to be before the floor will not be the original one. It will be one for four months. It will have some kind of provision for mom and pops. The problem is I don't think unless you guys can get us another couple of votes, I think that uh, we're going to be in, in trouble. So your, my suggestion would be to help us get those other few votes. Steve, good to see you. Likewise, sir. Um, I'm not going to take up much of your time, but I just want to point something out. Um, when the original amendment was considered to, on the council floor for council member Alacon's temporary rent freeze, um, the Han amendment, I am not sure or if it was even thought about or might have been thought about that this will exclude over 200,000 units of RSO housing throughout the city. And this will also create an exemption for owners such as Frank McHugh, who owns multiple unit, uh, multiple buildings with units of five or less in the city of Los Angeles. Frank McHugh had a property that collapsed on Vermont and Venice less than two years ago. He has also have been criminally prosecuted by the city attorney's office for slum housing violations. On top of individuals like McHugh, there's owners like Fred Leeds, who also owns multiple properties that have small mom and pop quote unquote units in their building. Um, creating a blanket exemption for them is clearly not acceptable and I clearly do not believe that is the intent of Council Member Alacorn or yourself, Council Member Wesson, in that. Currently there's, there's procedures in place as previously mentioned, such as just and reasonable rent applications where a landlord who is not making ends meet can apply to the housing department. Additionally, if a landlord creates capital improvement, um, to his unit or her unit, they can also apply for a just and reasonable rent increase under the capital improvement program. That is why we're recommending that a hardship, a hardship exemption be put in place for any landlord who does not meet the criteria or does, is not making ends meet can apply to the housing department for an exemption from this uh, temporary freeze. This is a, a hardship that's included in every moratorium and it's also required by law in every moratorium. Thank you. Yeah, I get it. I get it, Steve. But I think what we're trying to do here, and I'm just being honest, we're trying to open that door that's been shut for so long. And if we can open it, it might be easier to come back another time and open it wider. Uh, again, let me say that I'm very concerned that the, 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 the votes may not be there. Nick? Good morning. Good morning, Council Member. Um, sad to see the lack of the rest of your uh, committee here, but they are generally here, so I, I will give them slack on this day. Okay. Um, so I wanted to thank uh, this, this committee at one level for its leadership uh, most recently on trying to push forward these reforms. However, as you know, we've been coming here time and again over the past uh, year, basically, since, uh, clearly for many other issues, but since the Economic Roundtable study was finished in July of last year, and LAHD, in fact, did produce a set of recommendations. Uh, something that hopefully you all as committee members can urge is LAHD to take a stand on the document that it already took a stand on. Uh, its, its mode of answering questions in council was less than... Uh, you mean you don't want them to say that they, they don't have a position, they'll do what we say? Exactly, because they took a position and, you know, at one level, they're the housing department, right? Uh, and in fact, they were the ones that were created under Larso in the first place. 
So um, I appreciate you for this leadership, but I think we need a, far, a whole lot more. And uh, a certain amount of concern that was raised by a number of council members on the floor was that uh, uh, this motion uh, on the moratorium is piecemeal. It's right. It's just one thing. Um, and clearly, we need to push forward the overall Larso reforms. And this is something that we've been saying for a long time. And at the end of the hearing last Wednesday, um, you know, Council Member Reyes uh, expressed shock and concern that it had been a year since this report had been out and we hadn't done anything. So um, it's, uh, I appreciate your candid honesty when it comes to uh, accepting that you know, there are certain aspects uh, of getting votes. But really, um, I think the frame of the debate that occurred on the council floor was misguided insofar as uh, we spent a million dollars on a study that is incredibly comprehensive and that, in fact, studies all aspects, essentially, of the concerns that were raised. Uh, the whole point about the 3% minimum floor is that we are the only city that has that, that uses CPI, and landlords have been reaping a windfall for years and years because of it. I mean, there's explicit tables that show this. And so it's very important that we actually, I think, parse and shift what, what we're really talking about here when it comes to hardship and when it comes to uh, years, if not decades, of rent gouging. And uh, when it comes down to it, uh, four months will not be enough, but we need to make sure that this overall set of reforms is moving forward so that we don't actually leave the tenant majority uh, at risk. Thanks, Nick. Just been joined by Council Member Perry. Is it Thel Thelma Perez? Yes. Yeah, or Thelmi? Thelmi. It's just silence, and it's with a Y. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, um, I'm Thelmi Perez, and I've been here before. I know we, we've all been here time, week after week after week. We didn't bring a large group this week. But we're here to talk about, you know, what happened on Friday, and I know that Nick just articulated it very well. Um, but we're basically urging this committee to move forward some kind of uh, LARSA reform and for us to start looking at that. If we do get these four months, we really need to look at those four months as a time to start moving forward some of the reforms that were laid out in the study. So that's all I'm here to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Madam CLA, is there uh, any more business before this committee? Uh, yes, I understand we're going to, excuse me, reconsider item five. Oh, no, I take that back. We are moving on to, we're done with the regular agenda. So, is there any more business before this committee? Yes. We're just going to the special. Yes. Okay. So we have to recess to go. What's the special? You can adjourn there, right? We can adjourn the regular meeting. Okay, then we'll adjourn, and then we'll go to the special agenda. Okay. Item one, CRA Board of Commissioners report relative to the appointment of Ms. Christine Essel as the CRA Chief Executive Officer and Agency Administrator. Okay, that item will be continued. Now the special hearing is adjourned. Do you know how long it's going to be continued? I don't have Ooh, I just found out late yesterday. In fact, what are you going to get? Yeah, I was late. They reconsidered the reconsideration? Yeah, I know. I wasn't in there. I wasn't in there. Yeah. Call. So what is it?